Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, can I, it's my pleasure to welcome you here to the first executive question time scrutiny meeting of Cheshire West and Chester Council um, here at Bishop Eva High School in Malpas. So if I can start, please, and ask uh, Councillor Jones if you'd like to introduce yourself and your responsibilities, and then Councillor Harrard. Thank you very much, Chair Chairman. I'm Mike Jones. I'm a member for the Broxton Ward, one of three, and I'm also the leader of Cheshire West and Chester Council. Councillor I'm Councillor Arthur Harada. I'm the Executive Member for Children's Services, and my ward is Overley, which is south of uh, River Ding. And these are from Luke Thornton, who is representing Year 10 here at Bishop High, Eva High School. He's a member of the Year 10 Council and the School Council, and is, I believe, asking these questions on behalf of them as well. Um, I'm, going to ask, I'm going to ask Luke to ask the headlines of each of his questions now, and then see if Councillor Harada can answer those. I'm a Year 10 student. These questions were collated by the Year 10 Council. Um, these by getting rid of the mobile classrooms that we've got at the back of the school and replacing them with um, brick buildings, which we, we, we think will just encourage learning young people in rural areas. At the minute we think it's too expensive and the last bus is run at quarter to six, so if you want to get up into Chester you're going to end up walking home. So we can't do that being in rural Chester. Um, also, how can ICT facilities be improved both in schools and make ICT facilities available at home? At the minute, if you want home, then you've got to complete all your working lessons. There's no homework that can be set for ICT. And finally, how can we improve facilities to encourage um, the develop personal development of people within different subject areas? At the minute, we've got award ceremony subjects. Good evening. Thank you for your questions. Um, as a former teacher, I know exactly uh, what the situation is with regard to uh, working in a mobile. Uh, in the winter they are cold and in the summer they're too hot and when you put the heating on there's all peculiar smells. It's not to do with the occupants of the room, it's to do with the, the material. That's a quick supplementary because there is a National Building Schools for the Future programme and uh, my understanding is that uh, we in Cheshire West and Chester are not as high up that as we might have hoped and I wonder <coughs> what the current situation is in terms of our access to funding from that programme, from the BSF programme. Building schools for the future, well, in terms of um, the latest list that I'm aware of, we were third from the top. But that doesn't mean to say that third from the top means that we're going to get the money immediately. But maybe the, the director, Dr. Stevens, could just give me a better update. Make a judgment whether we can access any of that programme. Um, and obviously it's competitive with other waves in the country. Uh, but actually it does pick up another point that Luke made in his questions. In terms of building schools for the future, makes a huge investment. It's not just about buildings, it's about changing the way we think about learning and digital technologies are very much at the heart of it. So we're, we're working very, uh, very hard to, to be successful in that readiness to deliver it. One comment on this, this is one area where we've received a lot of complaints about is the lack of investment in schools, both primary and secondary schools. And when we've sat down now and actually looked at the capital programme, bits here, there and everywhere, and of course it has to also follow specific funding <coughs> streams that have been allocated to the council by the government. So there is no real overall, of, we are looking as part of that process is, well, there are assets we can sell. You know, for example, we own 5,000 acres of farmland, which we inherited from the county council. We own buildings in Chester. Do, should we be owning that type of thing? Should we be running farms or should we sell it and raise potentially 100, 100 and odd million pounds and invest that in schools and roads? So the level of the curriculum, those type of things. And then how do we weight them? And then when, once we've weighted them, we then allocate the weight into schools and say, well, this school actually needs 10 million pounds, this school needs to be involved in. I believe there was a rating system for um, development in schools. In fact, my primary school, which there, there again, perhaps I should declare an interest, was always told they were second on the list to get a new hall. But we can't find the list. <laughs> we were told once Bailey got the village hall, <coughs> Barrow was next, and bailey has got its, its hall. Yes. So I'm expecting to be top of the list. About four years ago, about four years ago, the, the TLC process ran the way that investment was delivered in schools over the last four years, which I think is inappropriate. So if, if, I'm assuming that we'll be able to find that information and perhaps go to your select panel, yes. Councillor Johnson, for being helpful. Uh, can we move on to the questions now that we've had about transport? Yes, I, yeah, I, I appreciate the, the issue. What you're saying is about transport accessible to young people. Um, 
and of course this is one of the disadvantages of living in a rural area as versus one of the advantages that some people say that there isn't all the, the noise and all the hassle of living in a large city um, in comparison. But with regard to, to transport, uh, one of the, the, the challenges of course is that um, having enough customers to make such a transport system viable. Um, and were you thinking in terms of what, a bus coming down here and collecting you at, say, 7 o'clock? Areas, that are sort of sort of areas from getting from home up to Chester to do sort of other activities, sort of scouting, swimming, whatever, whatever that might be, football, and then another area, sort of getting from after school activities at school back to home again. I mean, my auntie's an assistant head teacher in a school in Staffordshire, and they've got a system where they've got a minibus that takes sort of the rugby team, goes round a set route and drops off all the kids but that, that's been funded by uh, I, think it, I think it was the Stafford um, City Council but I, I'm not sure but um, th they've had funding to be able to fund that so they can get everybody doing after school activities if, what a, um, if for whatever reason your parents are ill or they can't afford cars or whatever then you're stranded really and you don't really have any other option than to get the free school buses home straight after school at 3.30. So you would ideally like a bus service that would pick you up at, say, 6 or 7 in the evening and get you back here for 11 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock, Saturdays and Sundays? Well, that's a problem that we've got, that different clubs run at different times, but yeah. sort of get up to, to get up to Chester, at the minute, it's £2.60, and the last bus runs at quarter past six, and it's obviously different from different areas, but if your club starts at seven, you'll get there for seven. But then you're stranded up in Chester and you obviously can't walk back like some people in like Blaken in the area that they can walk back. Um, yeah. I think I'm aware that this school is unfortunately top of the league for having um, students killed in road traffic accidents because of their, their isolation. And I think we really should look at some sort of transport system to enable, enable the youngsters to uh, have use of the facilities in um, the built-up areas in Chester and, and Whitchurch, which is not far away down the road. Um, I hate it every time I see in the local newspaper that another student from the school has been killed. And it's, it's regularly, it's regular occurrence because of the isolation of the community. So uh, I would ask you to um, take on board the question and um, see if something can be done. If there are particular projects being run by, say, the youth service, uh, it appears from the one that's, that's listed here, that actually, while students from here are encouraged to be involved, uh, there doesn't seem to be the support to get them there. And that might be a specific thing we need to look at in terms of how uh, students from rural parts of Cheshire, West and Chester get involved in projects that are based in urban areas. Just to clarify a little bit, that connections, and you have connections uh, branch at the, uh, at the school here, they are actually working with the Youth Parliament, and the Youth Parliament have actually identified that from the whole of Cheshire. Uh, Cheshire West, that they need transport and um, they're looking into this so connections could be the way forward. This, this is a very important point. We've got a number of regeneration projects we're looking at developing. Chester Renaissance is one that's well on the way. Uh, Winning Winds for the Northwich Vision with Weaver Valley is a, is a second project we're developing together. As we pause. And then the fourth one is about the rural area because we have problems not just with isolation of, of young people uh, but our vulnerable adults as well who live in these very grand houses, totally isolated, no car, and actually are on their own and very vulnerable and isolated. So transport is a major issue in terms of uh, solving some of the problems in our rural areas. And so it is on the agenda for that. Thank you. So Councillor Harad, if we can move on then to the, the final two questions, one about personal development of students in a variety of different areas and ICT facilities.